This is Jamie with Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in Visit from the Rhine Valley, the brand new Viticulture expansion that releases today, June 1st, if your retailer has it yet. The shipping went a little bit longer than we thought, so your retailer may not have it for a few more days, but they'll get it soon. Before I say that, though, I want to say that I recently got uh, this book, Board Game Design Advice, compiled and uh, partially written by Gabe Barrett, but also written by a, a ton of awesome designers. Gabe put together some great questions for a variety of designers and a ton of designers um, responded to it and answered in their own words. Um, I was a backer of this book and I recently got it in the mail just a couple days ago. And since then it's been on my desk and whenever I transition between two different tasks or I just need a, a mental break for a few minutes, I've been reading a chapter or two of this book because they're really nice and bite-sized and they're broken down into questions within each chapter. And I have to say, it is just, I would call it indip indispensable. This is an excellent board game design book um, that gives you the perspective of a ton of different designers. Uh, Gabe didn't ask me to say this, I just, I've had it on my desk and I thought, I've got to mention this, it's really good. Um, I have a chapter in it too, but uh, lots of other very talented designers um, that, that have better things to say than I do. So I'd recommend checking out the book. Anyway, so Visit from the Rhine Valley is the brand new Viticulture expansion. And my overarching mechanism that I really, really like about this expansion is just the core idea of it that uh, Tito Lorenz, my co-designer, and uh, Frank at Forland came up with for this expansion, which was instead of having visitor cards, instead of having all these visitor cards that focused on victory points, or at least had some way of getting victory points from them, this expansion says, we want cards that help you build your engine and that pretty much do anything but directly give you victory points. That way it encourages players to actually go through the process of making wine and building up their vineyard and, uh, and, and fill in wine orders, going through the entire wine process instead of just getting one point here and there, which is a valid viticulture strategy. And those cards can remain in play if you want as a separate deck, or you can replace them every now and then with these cards, the uh, 40 summer cards, 40 winter visitor cards. I love that concept of replacing um, little bite-sized victory points with engine building elements um, and elements that help you go through the winemaking process. So I thought I'd highlight uh, a few of my favorite card concepts today. So I'll hold it up for a second and I'll tell you what I really like about this card. This is the premium buyer. Um, there are a lot of cards in these decks that say, uh, do this thing. So this one says, fill one wine order. If all the wine tokens used to fill the wine order were at least two higher than the necessary value, gain two victory points. And I like this concept. I like this concept of, um, uh, I actually mentioned on a recent video about Raiders of the North Sea, that if you like, if you do better than you thought you would, or you, you have overkill, you, you have more than what you need. And in this case, if you're, if your wine tokens are worth a lot more than the wine order that you use them for, you get a benefit from it if you use this card. That's cool. Another card, I'm gonna do this back, I'm doing Winter Visitors first. Here is the next card, the Winter Agent. This says, draw two Summer Visitors. If any opponent already has at least five victory points, also draw one wine order. I really like cards that correspond to timing, where the timing of them uh, makes you feel really good if you wait until, the, until you play them at the right time. But if that time has passed, they're still valid. Uh, Terraforming Mars does this really well. It has a lot of cards that you need to play at a very specific time to optimize them, or even just to play them at all. And so there are a number of cards in Visit from the Rhine Valley that have to do with your current level of victory points or your opponent's level of victory points. And they might activate special things if you, uh, if you have a certain level. I think I had one other example of that. Yeah, here's another example of that. So this one, this one corresponded to your opponents. This one, the early buyer, uh, corresponds to your victory points. It says, fill one wine order and gain two lira. If you have no more than five victory points, gain four dollars instead. So if you don't have a lot of victory points at that point in the game, the card gives you a little boost. Really, really like that concept of looking at the victory points. I have three other examples, so I'll, I'll do one's other summer real quick. So here is the owner. Owner says, um, so there are a number of cards in this deck that, that ask you if you currently have a certain structure. This one says, build one structure at its regular cost. You choose two of the, uh, these options. Choose two. Build one structure, draw one wine order, or plant one vine. If you have the mill, gain one victory point. 
So it was kind of encouraging. If you draw, draw this and you don't have the mill, then you think, you know, maybe maybe I'll get the mill. Maybe that'll push me in a different way because now that I have the mill, I, I need to use the mill. I need to benefit from it. Um, but uh, and if you don't, you can still use the card. So I like that idea of looking at buildings. What, do I play this after I have the building? Do I do I definitely play it now that I already have the building? Things like that. Grape vendor. Um, grape vendor says discard. So this was actually a fairly complicated card. It says discard one grape to gain either lira equal to its value, or um, draw uh, a winter visitor cards equal to half its value rounded up. German designers love this rounding concept, especially like Uwe Rosenberg. Um, then gain four lira if you have the tasting room. So this is another example of a card that looks at whether or not you have. A building. There are a few others like this that I, I think there's one that says like um, build this building for less than its regular cost or for free. But if you already have this building, do this other separate thing. So it it I, I like cards that always do something um, good no matter where you are in the game uh, or no matter what your situation is. They're still valid plays because this is a blind draw when you draw cards in in viticulture. Last, I have the Great Merchant. I'll end with this one. Grape Merchant says, sell up to three grapes for triple their price. Something players don't often do in Viticulture, but you can sell your grapes uh, using the sell grape action. Or discard two grape tokens to gain a six value wine token, blush, blush wine token, even if you don't have the medium seller. This is a really cool concept in this game. There are a number of cards that, um, maybe not a number, there are four or five cards that let you uh, either make wine or just buy a wine token and put it in your cellar, even if you don't have the medium or large cellar. And what this does is that normally in Viticulture, if you're filling a lot of wine orders, it's almost a necessity, or pretty much is a necessity, to get a medium and or a large wine cellar. But these cards say, no, you can circumvent that. You can get a wine token in there without actually having that cellar and uh, fill wine orders as a, as a result. Anyway, I'm, I'm really impressed with the work that Tito did on this, and um, it was a lot of fun to work with him on, on making the cards fit into the world of viticulture. This video has run a bit long, but this is one of my own games, so I'll give myself a pass on that. If you have a favorite mechanism in, um, in Visit from the Rhine Valley, or really any expansion that adds new cards and new mechanisms to it, well, any mix, expansion adds new mechanisms, let's say cards, any expansion that adds new card abilities to the game, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks.